Woman of color, oppressed, conservative, not free, but free enough to stand here on stage, not educated, closed-minded because of this thing on my head. These are just some of the words that usually pop up when people see women who look like me. Sometimes because of the color of my skin, in this case, the headscarf I'm wearing, or maybe even my accent. English is my fourth language, by the way. And the thing is, I don't even blame them, because we're all biased. The important thing is that we acknowledge this fact. But what if I told you that we can change the way we look at each other, that we can change the way we look at people who are different? First of all, let me tell you who I really am. My name is Yasmina Siri. I'm 25 years old, as Bess said before. I'm, I was born in Belgium. I'm a granddaughter of Moroccan mine workers. I work as a marketing and communication officer at the University College here in Antwerp. I'm the founder of Emena, the founder and director of Flex, and I write. I write for the daily newspaper, De Morgen. So it's perfectly possible that you have seen me on your screen, that you read my opinion pieces in the newspaper, or that you already have heard me on the radio. So not do I only know how it feels like to be a member of a minority group or a member of our society, I also do know how it feels like to be misrepresented by the media and at the same time to be a part of that media while constantly being reduced to the way I look and what I believe in. And even though our society is so diverse, there are still so many people who had never the opportunity or never took their chances to meet someone who thinks and looks differently. I'm often the only person at events, as a speaker or a guest, who is a woman of color, Muslim, or even just a woman. And believe me, it's not because I'm the only one who speaks her mind or the only one who's passionate about making a difference in our society. I'm not. And if you think about it, it is actually pretty sad. Because if you see at how diverse our cities are, for example, here in Antwerp alone, there are more than 170 different nationalities, which makes the city as diverse as New York. But still, it sometimes just feels like we're all living next to each other instead of with each other. And that's why media in general are so important for a society. They're not only an important source of information about social changes in different communities, they're also an interesting way of interacting with different kinds of people in our society. And that's why media should reflect the same diversity that's seen in our society. If even I don't see people who look like me in different spaces where I'm invited, how do you think other minorities would feel? And just to be clear, when I use the word minority or diversity, I'm not only talking about people of color or religious minorities, such as Muslims or Jews. I'm also talking about women in general, people with disabilities, and members of the LGBTQ community, because they are mostly forgotten. So let me tell you this personal story I have. One year ago, in September 2016, I wrote my first opinion piece for the daily newspaper, De Morgen. It was a pretty good start because it was shared so many times it even resulted in an invite for a live TV program next to the world's best major, Bert Somers. And, uh, <laughs> and I remember how I felt when the taxi driver drove me to the studio in Brussels. How did I get here? And I was hearing my mother's voice telling me, why do you always get yourself into trouble? <laughs> Anyways. Just imagine, a 20-year-old something student was going to have this conversation on live TV for the first time, and she was going to explain about how hate against minorities leads to irrational decisions in our society and in politics. And the thing is, I didn't feel insecure about what I was going to tell, but I was insecure about the consequences afterwards. How much hate would I receive? and how many people would be blinded by the way I look and not listen to what I had to tell? And will my positive self be able to handle all this negativity? Anyways, um, I survived, except for the death threats I received and the hateful tweets. But I'm standing here, so it's uh, all okay. And I also did receive so many positive comments from journalists, politicians, even my professors were sending me emails to support me. 
And I did also receive many messages from people who I didn't know. People who were so in shock for seeing someone being articulated on TV. Someone who looks like me. Someone who is being fluent in Dutch. And I still believe that they meant well, but it didn't feel like a compliment. Of course I'm fluent in Dutch. I was born here. I even know so many people who weren't even born here in Belgium and are fluent in Dutch. It's not a big deal. It's not an accomplishment. So it didn't feel like a compliment. But what it did mean is the fact that there was something shifting in their minds, that they were changing the way they were thinking about certain minorities. And it does also mean how rare diversity on our screens actually is, especially here in Flanders. And that's not all, because a couple of weeks later, I officially started as a columnist for the daily newspaper. And I remember how my colleague asked me this one strange question. He got me slightly irritated, by the way. And um, he asked me, he said, Yasmin, how does it feel to be the first headscarf-wearing Muslim woman writing for a newspaper here in Belgium and Flanders? And I was like, who cares? Isn't what's in my head that should matter instead of what's on my head? And you can still find the interview online, because my answer was exa exactly two words. Who cares? <laughs> and yeah, I was kind of naive, to be honest, because I didn't realize how important that question actually was. Because being the first means changing the narrative. It means making a difference without even knowing it. And even though I didn't see it as an accomplishment, it was a huge step forward for our media industry. Because being the first also means opening doors for more others to come. And unfortunately, we all know that the first step is always the hardest. And that's exactly what I experienced dur during months of writing for the Morga. It was so hard to be constantly reduced to the way I look and not uh, to the message I was trying to spread. And that also made me realize, if no one on your screen or in print looks like you, how will you be able to believe that you can get there too, that you can have the same goals and same ambitions? More importantly, how would others know that a woman of color can also talk about the world of startups instead of always being invited to talk about her race or gender? And how would others know that a Muslim woman, with or without a headscarf, can be financial experts too, instead of constantly being reduced to the way they look like and their beliefs. It's so important to have diversity in the movie industry, especially in superhero movies. That's why the Black Panther and uh, Wonder Woman are such a huge deal. And there is also science behind it, because research has already proven the importance of representation and diversity in the media and entertainment industry. And the thing is, if you want to battle all these stereotypes, if you really want to make a change and end misrepresentation of minorities in our society, then we, start, then we have to start by accepting the fact that diversity in media is powerful. Because diversity in media means normalizing all of us. It means making us feel comfortable with all our differences. Because what is seen on our screens and what is read in print is felt in our society. We absorb all the information we see and we read, and it has incredible influence on how we live our lives and how we interact with each other. More diversity in media benefits all of us. And if we're really that honest about making a difference, about ending misrepresentation and doing something about the lack of representation of minorities in media, then how about we start now? Thank you.